اللهم صل على محمد في الأولين وصل على محمد في الآخرين وصل على محمد في الملأ الأعلى إلى يوم الدين The story of Prophet Yaqub عليه السلام Prophet Yaqub عليه السلام descended from a line of devout prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and continued to carry the message of oneness through his progeny. He was the son of Prophet Ishaq alayhi salam and his grandfather was none other than Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. The story of Prophet Yaqub alayhi salam mentioned in Islamic literature is often interwined with the story of Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam. The Quran does not delve into the details of the life of Prophet Ishaq alayhi salam and subsequently Yaqub alayhi salam. Hence, what is known about Yaqub's early life is often adapted by reliable Quranic commentators from the people of the book. The Origin of Banu Israel, Children of Israel Prophet Yaqub alayhi salam was the father to twelve sons, the first ten were born to his first wife, while Prophet Yusuf السلام, and his brother Binyamin were born to his second wife. The twelve sons made up the original twelve tribes of Banu Israel. The Quran mentions, quote, Say, O believers, we have believed in Allah and what has been revealed to us and what has been revealed to Abraham and Ishmael and Isaac and Jacob and the descendants, al-Asbat, and what was given to Moses and Jesus and what was given to the prophets from their Lord. We make no distinction between any of them and we are Muslims in submission to him. This was Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 36. From this Ayah, it mentions the descendants of Yaqub alayhi salam, referring to his twelve children. After Yusuf alayhi salam rise in Egypt, becoming the chief minister, his whole family moved there. They lived there peacefully for many generations until they fell under the tyranny of a pharaoh. Here, they suffered greatly. It wasn't until Prophet Musa alayhi salam came that they found liberation. After helping the children of Israel escape, Musa alayhi salam performed a miracle. Allah says in the Quran, And recall when Moses prayed for water for his people, so he said, Strike with your staff the stone, and there gushed forth from it twelve springs, and every person, referring to the twelve tribes, knew its watering place. Eat and drink from the provision of Allah, and do not commit abuse on the earth, spreading corruption. This was Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 60. Yaqub alayhi salam's story in the Quran. When Yusuf alayhi salam was still a young boy, he woke one morning and narrated to his father of a dream he had. Allah says in the Quran, Oh my father, Indeed, I have seen eleven stars and the sun and the moon. I saw them prostrating to me. End quote. This was Surah Yusuf, Ayah 4. Prophet Yaqub salam, gifted with the ability to interpret dreams, was overcome with immense joy. He understood that the dream was a sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he had chosen Yusuf salam, for a special purpose which is to continue his legacy and succeed him in prophethood. In the dream, it is believed the eleven stars symbolize his brothers and the sun and the moon are his parents. Yaqub was also concerned about the brothers' reaction to his narration, for although Yaqub treated them equally, they did feel envious of Yusuf He knew that jealousy was a vicious emotion that had the power to cause significant harm. So he warned Yusuf السلام, against relating his dream to his brothers. Despite Yaqub السلام's efforts, the malice in the hearts of his sons against Yusuf السلام, grew over the years. 
One day, his older sons approached Yaqub and suggested that he permit Yusuf to join them on an outing. Allah says in the Quran, O oh, our father, why do you not trust us with Yusuf, although we truly wish him well? Send him out with us tomorrow, so that he may enjoy himself and play, and we will really watch over him, they said. This was in Surah Yusuf, Ayat 11 and 12. Yaqub was reluctant. He answered in the Quran saying, Indeed, it saddens me that you should take him, and I fear that a wolf would eat him while you are unaware. This was in Surah Yusuf, Ayah 13. The sons replied in the Quran, If a wolf were to devour him despite our strong group, then we would certainly be losers. This was in Surah Yusuf, Ayah 14. So, he conceded to their request. As Yaqub feared, the brothers returned weeping on the evening of the outing. Our father, we went racing and left Yusuf with our belongings, and a wolf devoured him. But you will not believe us no matter how truthful we are. They claimed, producing the blood-stained and ripped shirt of Yusuf Yaqub understood that his sons had given in to shaitan's whispers. He knew that they had deliberately harmed their brother Yusuf But Yaqub also had faith that Yusuf was still alive and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was protecting him. Quote, No, your souls must have tempted you to do something evil, he enraged. So I can only endure with beautiful patience. It is Allah's help that I seek to bear your claims. End quote. Years passed as Yaqub continued to grieve for Yusuf in silence. His eyes turned white as he slowly lost his eyesight, but his faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's power to return his son to him never wavered. A terrible famine hit Egypt and the neighboring regions. Prophet Yaqub instructed his sons, except Binyamin, to travel to the king's place in Egypt to secure provisions. Upon their return, they informed their father that the storekeeper of the king's palace had refused to provide them with further provisions if they did not return with their youngest brother. Yaqub was not pleased with the news. How could he trust them once again after they had let him down with Yusuf he demanded, quote, Should I trust you with him, as I once trusted you with his brother Yusuf? But only Allah is the best protector, and he is the most merciful of the merciful. End quote. This was in Surah Yusuf, Ayah 64. The brothers also discovered upon opening their bags that their money had been returned to them. This pushed them further to plead with their father. Quote, O oh, our father, what more can we ask for? Here is our money, fully returned to us. Now we can buy more food for our family. We will watch over our brother and obtain an extra camel load of grain. That load can be easily secured. End quote. This was in Surah Yusuf, Ayah 65. Yaqub was once again compelled to concede. But he demanded, quote, I will not send him with you until you give me a solemn oath by Allah that you will certainly bring him back to me, unless you are totally overpowered. Once the sons had given their oath, he said, Allah is a witness to what we have said. End quote. This was in Surah Yusuf, Ayah 66. He then instructed, quote, O oh my sons, do not enter the city all through one gate, but through separate gates. I cannot help you against what is destined by Allah in the least. It is only Allah who decides. In Him, 
I put my trust, and in him let the faithful put their trust. End quote. This was in Surah Yusuf, Ayah 67. The sons returned once again with grave news. They reported to their father that the youngest, Benjamin, had been accused of theft and was detained in Egypt. Yaqub was enraged. Allah says in the Quran, No, your souls must have tempted you to do something evil. So I am left with nothing but beautiful patience. I trust Allah will return them all to me. Surely he alone is the all-knowing, all-wise. End quote. This was in Surah Yusuf, Ayah 83. He then turned away from them and lamented, quote, Alas, poor Yusuf. End quote. This was in Surah Yusuf, Ayah 84. The brothers were infuriated by their father's love for their long-forgotten brother. Allah says in the Quran, By Allah, you will not cease to remember Yusuf until you lose your health or even your life. This was in Surah Yusuf, Ayah 85. Yaqub alayhi salam replied, Quote, I complain of my anguish and sorrow only to Allah, and I know from Allah what you do not know. End quote. This was in Surah Yusuf, Ayah 86. The beautiful lesson of Yaqub alayhi salam. What is most commendable about this is the way Yaqub alayhi salam responded to the challenging situations. In times of distress, he turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, embodying the phrase فَصَبْرٌ Jamil, meaning beautiful patience. It is a special kind of patience characterized by maintaining a positive outlook and unwavering trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan, especially in difficult times. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, The real patience is at the first stroke of a calamity. This is mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari 1302. It's about displaying calmness and faith instead of succumbing to anger or frustration. To a believer, every circumstance, however challenging, is ultimately beneficial, although its goodness may not be immediately apparent. We are often guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ways beyond our understanding, unable to see the full picture until we look back at our journey, seeing how all the dots were connected. For instance, Yusuf alayhi salam's betrayal by his brothers and subsequent hardships eventually led to his role working for the king and saving countless lives. The ways of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are indeed mysterious and always for the best, even if they are not immediately clear to us. We must soften our hearts and truly understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's best for each and every one of us. Yaqub alayhi salam reunited with his son. Yaqub alayhi salam then commanded his sons to go back and look for both their brothers. Quote, O oh my sons, go and search diligently for Yusuf and his brother, and do not lose hope in the mercy of Allah, for no one loses hope in Allah's mercy except those with no faith. End quote. This was in Surah Yusuf, Ayah 87. So the sun set off once again. Before long, Prophet Yaqub alayhi salam, blinded by his grief for his lost son, informed those around him, saying, quote, You may think I am senile, but I certainly sense the smell of Joseph. End quote. This was in Surah Yusuf, Ayah 94. They replied, quote, By Allah, you are definitely still in your old delusion. 
End quote. This was in Surah Yusuf, Ayah 95. When his sons returned once again, they cast a shirt over their father's face. By the miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya'qub alayhi salam regained his vision. It was a shirt belonging to none other than Yusuf alayhi salam, the storekeeper of the king's palace. Overjoyed, Ya'qub alayhi salam informed his children saying, quote, Did I not tell you that I truly know from Allah what you do not know? End quote. This was in Surah Yusuf, Ayah 96. His children begged Ya'qub alayhi salam saying, quote, O oh, our father, pray for the forgiveness of our sins. We have certainly been sinful. End quote. This was in Surah Yusuf, Ayah 97. Ya'qub alayhi salam said, and I quote, I will pray to my Lord for your forgiveness. He alone is indeed the all-forgiving, most merciful. End quote. This was in Surah Yusuf, Ayah 98. So the sons took their eager father to Egypt to reunite him with his beloved son and prophet Yusuf alayhi salam. Upon receiving his family, Yusuf alayhi salam announced, quote, Enter Egypt, Allah willing, in security. End quote. This was Surah Yusuf, Ayah 99. Yusuf alayhi salam then raised his father to the throne and said, quote, O my dear father, this is the interpretation of my old dream. My Lord has made it come true. He was truly kind to me when he freed me from prison and brought you all from the desert after Satan had ignited rivalry between me and my siblings. Indeed, my Lord is subtle in fulfilling what he wills. Surely he alone is the all-knowing, all-wise. This was Surah Yusuf, Ayah 100. The Passing of Prophet Ya'qub alayhi salam Before Prophet Ya'qub alayhi salam passed away, he asked his sons one final question. Quote, what will you worship after me? They said, We will worship your God and the God of your fathers, Abraham and Ishmael and Isaac, one God, and we are Muslims in submission to him. End quote. This was Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayah 133. This verse is believed to be part of the argument in the Qur'an that all the prophets who came before worshipped one God and therefore cannot be claimed by the people of the book in an exclusive way. <laughs>